well, it was like June 4th of 2018. I'll never forget it. He came to me because I said, I finally said, well, he had been losing weight and my friends were starting to ask if he has cancer or something. I'm like, no, I, you know, and so finally I said, what's wrong? I finally said it. And he said to me, um, I'm not happy. I don't love you. And um, I am going to leave, <sighs> go away for a few days. He said a few days and I'm going to still work during the day, but I'm not going to be here. And I was just like, I could not believe it. I felt like a he'd stab, like I'd been hit by a Mack truck or he stabbed me or something. And so I was just like, I, that's when I said, I go, is there another woman? And he said, um, yes. Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your marriage without your husband's conscious efforts that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm talking about what to do when your husband is in love with someone else. My guest, Cindy's husband, was having an affair for three years, which she never thought would happen to her. Saving her marriage seemed completely hopeless because he wouldn't end it. Then she started experimenting with the intimacy skills, and today she has the marriage she always wanted. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. But first, let's talk about what to do when your husband is in love with someone else. What could be worse than knowing that your husband loves someone else when he should be devoted to you and only you? This should not be happening. It is so wrong. And it's a terrible rejecting feeling to know he finds someone else so alluring that he's willing to put everything he has with you at risk. I mean, is she prettier than you? Is she younger than you? I mean, what is it about her that's worth making this huge fuss about? Because he is your husband and him loving someone else is not a part of the agreement you made. So it's hurtful. It's disappointing. After all the time, attention, and affection that he's giving her, it's taken away from the time, attention, and affection he should be giving you. But there are things that I recommend to not only alleviate the pain you're in, but also to put the situation right again and put your family right again too. So here we go. Number one is to be the best moper. Be the best moper. And this is a painful shock you're experiencing. And it makes sense that you have big feelings about it. And I support you letting those feelings have their day in the sun. As a mere mortal woman, you've got some anger, some hurt, and some sadness happening right now. And I know for me, when I'm going through something big like that, it helps a lot to give myself the time and space to let those feelings arise in me and then naturally subside as they always do. So commit to moping and don't let anyone out mope you. But consider doing your moping with supportive people who aren't your husband. I know you you might like to punish him right now, and I can see why you feel that way. And I'm not saying that what he's doing is right or that it's okay, but you and your husband are bound together in so many ways. And as far as I know, there's no way to punish him without punishing yourself. And that's the last thing you need right now while you're feeling so fragile. Number two, stop giving her oxygen. Trying to piece together the ins and outs of his conversations with the woman he's in love with may feel like self-protection, like trying to find out if, if they've crossed the line. That's probably more tempting than eating a street taco. It's right in front of you. But what if your focus on the woman he's in love with is making her presence in your lives bigger, not smaller? You'd probably love to get her out of your lives completely, right? Like ideally your husband would block her and tell her it's done, done, done. And to never contact him again. You know, hopefully she just leaves the country and your husband forgets about her for good. That's your most wanted outcome, right? One way you can contribute to that outcome, which we see all the time around here, is for you to stop giving her your time and attention. What if you stopped thinking about her? 
and talking about her or, or checking to see what he texted her or, or looking at her social media. What if you acted like she didn't exist? I'm a firm believer that what you focus on increases. So if you choose your focus carefully, maybe by distracting yourself with other things that you would rather think about, she will shrink down to nothing. It's counterintuitive, I know. But this is something we hear happens for so many students who've been in your heart-wrenching situation and come through on the other side with their dignity intact and their families intact and their self-confidence higher than ever. True story. Number three, be the girl he fell in love with who was fun and light. And this may seem like the worst idea you've ever heard, but what if you responded to the heartbreak you're feeling now by deciding to have as much frivolous fun as you possibly could? What if you took up salsa dancing and, and karaoke and, and went to a hot springs with your girlfriends to have a really fun time? I know it sounds crazy, but for me, the crisis in my marriage was partly caused by lack of diligence on my part in having a good time. I was focused on being miserable and sad and complaining every chance I got, but so much of my suffering was because I wouldn't let myself do the things that I was drawn to for frivolous fun. I wouldn't let myself spend the money or take the time off or make the mess or or leave the laundry for later while I lingered over my tea or relaxed in the sun or chatted with my friends. So I was unhappy. And I was unpleasable. And that was unattractive. And and that contributed to a painful breakdown in my marriage that didn't get better until I started lingering over my cup of tea and relaxing in the sun and chatting with my friends. That's when it started to get a lot better at my house, which is why I'm a huge fan of frivolous self-care to this day. You might think that doesn't have anything to do with your situation. It won't help you solve the heartache that you're feeling with your husband being in love with someone else. And also, you might be busy moping today and possibly tomorrow. But consider doing an experiment where you go out of your way to make yourself happy, whatever that looks like for you. And and let's see what happens. March yourself out for a walk and, and a podcast that you love or crack up at a comedy on the couch, or get started on that creative project you haven't had time for. Some women self-care themselves from a breakdown where their husband fell in love with another woman to where she feels completely desired, taken care of, and special again with that same husband. If they can do it, then why not you too? Then You can be a guest on the podcast and share about how you did it while we do our happy dance together to celebrate your incredible accomplishment. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at getcherished.com. Go to getcherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest Cindy's husband was having an affair for three years, which she never thought would happen to her. Saving her marriage seemed completely hopeless because he wouldn't end it. Then she started experimenting with the six intimacy skills and it made him soften right in front of her eyes. Today, she has the marriage she always wanted. She's going to tell us what she did so you can do it too. Cindy, welcome, welcome, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. I am so excited that you're here. I can barely talk. Um, Thank you, Laura. I'm so excited to be here. You have an incredible story. I cannot wait to hear the whole thing. So, but let's go back to, let's start at the very worst part. What was happening in the bad old days? Well, um, first I have to go back to, we've been married 30 years and 
I really didn't think they were bad old days. I um, really loved my life. I I loved my kids, my family, my um, our church, our where we lived, our home, everything. And I mean, I knew that my husband and I were not close. Um, like we 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 weren't. We shared like the things of the kids and what we were doing during the day, but we never talked personal. And I always knew something was missing. So um, I don't know. I just, but I, I just thought, well, that's the way it is. And um, then when the kids, like we, we used to fight when the kids were little a lot, but then he kind of got stopped fighting, like got silent. And I thought he was just agreeing with me, you know, everything was good. And um, so he, he finally wised up. He finally got smart, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he finally, did, you know, doesn't want to argue about things. So, um, but that to me, I should have known that, you know, something was brewing underneath. And um, so then um, time went by and um, the kids moved out one by one. And um, that was just like a real eye opener because that had been my world. My kids were my world. His work was his world. He had his own business and he was very good at it. And um, so, then all of a sudden it was just us two in the house. It was really quiet and he was on his phone a lot or on TV or, you know, just, we never really, we had our own little worlds, I guess. And just like two ships passing in the night. And, um, it got, um, you know, I, I thought he was getting really grumpy and more and more grumpy. And I thought, well, that's just how marriage can be. And, you know, I just, you know, Put up with it and thought that's what I have. And um, he's even started losing weight, a lot of weight. And then um, he just, I noticed that, um, well, I went in to go tan for we were going to go to Florida or something. And I um, noticed that he had been tanning. He was written down there on the tanning. And I was like, wow, he never has done this before. And then I saw one time a little message come through on his phone and it said something about thank you. And it had a woman's name. And I'm like, oh, I wonder what that was, you know, and um, start little things started coming up, but I still was totally clueless because I thought we were Christians. We were, had great values and this would never happen to us, like never. And so it didn't even really cross my mind and I trusted him totally. And then, um, well, it was like June 4th of 2018. I'll never forget it. He came to me because I said, I finally said, well, he had been losing weight and my friends were starting to ask if he has cancer or something. I'm like, no, I, you know, and so finally I said, what's wrong? I finally said it. And he said to me, um, I'm not happy. I don't love you. And um, I am going to leave. Uh, go away for a few days. He said a few days and I'm going to still work during the day, but I'm not going to be here. And I was just like, I could not believe it. I felt like a, he stabbed, like I'd been hit by a Mack truck or he stabbed me or something. And so I was just like, I, that's when I said, I go, is there another woman? And he said, um, yes, but it's not a big, you know, it's nothing. I'm getting working through it. And I just need to have some, space kind of work through things and Laura you cannot imagine how my heart just if anyone I just it is awful to go through if anyone's ever been through it and it just felt like my whole world was crumbling and I didn't know what to do so anyway I spent the night alone and I um the next morning I thought <clears throat> I'm gonna go <clears throat> he said he was still going to work. So I'm going to go see if he's still at work. <clears throat> so I went in there and um, he wasn't there. And I, I could tell he wasn't there because his truck wasn't there. So then I was just heading home and I saw on Main Street, his truck was parked on Main Street. And so I um, thought, I wonder if he, we have a rental there. And I thought, I wonder if he's in there because it was empty at the time. And then I thought, or he could be across the street at like, there's a little restaurant and I didn't want to go in the restaurant if he was there. So I just thought I'm going to wait and see, you know, I parked where you couldn't really see me. And I thought I'm just going to see what he's, where he's coming out of. And all of a sudden I looked, I was looking at something else and his truck was gone. So I thought, Oh no. So I started down the road and I was going to go back to his work. And um, I saw 
his bookkeeper coming out of our empty rental. And I saw her walk into her car. And all of a sudden, I just feel like God gives us insight when something is really wrong in our life. And he, it all the pieces fit together. And that was the name I had seen on the text. Um, There, you know, it just all clicked. And so I went in to, I went in to him in the office and said, I need to talk to you. And so he um, came out to the car and I said to him right out blank, I said, I know what's going on. I know, you know, I said the name, I know you're with this person and I know you're having an affair and I know, and he just couldn't believe it. And he's, and he admitted it. He agreed. He said, I know, I, I don't know what to do. And he was at that point, he was repentant and said, I don't know what to do. I, I don't know how this happened. I don't, you know, and it was just so hard. And I believed him that it was really going to be done. And it, it just, it wasn't, oh. it, you know, he was, he was home, with, you know, he was, he came back home right away and we were together and, but I didn't have the skills, Laura. And I feel like I totally just drove him back away because I was like, oh, I was like the biggest prickly porcupine, like you, I mean, the, you know, like you have really sinned. And I was just, you're committed adultery and, you know, just pounding him about how terrible that was. And um, like, and it wasn't long and he was, you know, he went back. Uh, it, he, he, um, it took a while, like for a while he was, he got it. Well, he said, I, well, when he was trying to get away from it, he said, I can't go back to work because she's right there. So I have to rent an apartment so that I can work during the day and then come home at night. Well, you know, I believed him through that. And it was not, it was just oh. to get an apartment to go out. So I, he did that for like six months. He was in that apartment and then he felt really bad. Had it, like literally Laura over three years, this happened. I counted it 25 times where he would say, I'm so sorry. I need to come back. I'm going to turn it around. I'm not going to do that. And even one time he went away to Arizona for six months to a rehab place for, to get over this. And, you know, I, I Googled a lot on affairs and it's like cocaine. It's like a cocaine addict and they just can't, it's, it gets all these chemicals in their brain and I don't know, but he really did keep saying he wanted to be done with it, but yet then sometimes he'd just be like, no, and he'd be off. And so it was really, really a hard Uh time. So, I mean, the first time you found out it was crushing, I'm sure. But then each time he's saying, oh no, I, and he was repentant and And saying, I'm going to, and each time it's happening again, you know, all 25 times. (laughs) You get your hopes up, right? And then you get And and it was so believable. It was like, this time he told his family or this time he told the church or this time, you know, like there was always something that made me think. This time he's going to a recovery place. This time for for sure. This time it's going to work. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cindy, this is, um, you really got beat up in that process. I'm sure that must've been devastating. Yeah, it was. But honestly, I can say looking back, I am I am actually glad it happened because we have a marriage that's so much better than it ever would have been if it wouldn't have happened. <laughs> Whoa, did you just say, I think you did, I'm grateful that my husband had an affair and then said he'd come back and then didn't and went back to her, and back to me and back to her. And back. You're grateful. I mean, it sounds on the surface like, That's crazy, Cindy, but you really are grateful. I mean, I wouldn't want it on anyone and I wouldn't want to go through it ever again. I wouldn't go through it ever again, but I just, I know that it took all that to get to where we are now and it's so worth it. Like my Angelo says, wouldn't give him nothing for my journey now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, amazing. So, okay. So, um, so you're in this 
just terrible roller coaster of like, oh, he's coming back. Oh, he's not. Okay, he's co- okay. We're on. We're off. We're on. We're off. And uh, I remember hearing early on that you had, you guys had gone to marriage counseling too. As yeah. Part and that, the- oh yeah, that was a disaster. The marriage counselor kept saying, "Well, um, we can't uh, do anything until Doug's over the, over with his affair." Doug, are you over with your affair? No, you know, we would go back literally once a week. No. And it was just, it was crazy. And so, and I knew by then I had found the skills and I'm like, no, there's stuff we can do. There's stuff we can do here. But I mean, I don't know if I had found the skills. I don't think I had. But now looking back, I think, no, we could have done plenty. You know, I could have been doing lots of stuff, but he acted like there was nothing we could do. So that only lasted a year and we were done. We were done. So you're just at marriage counseling, just waiting for him to come to his senses. And there was like, no, and and you were you're still like, I'm the good wife. He I'm the victim here. He's cheating on me. And uh yeah, which can was, be some comfort, I guess, but, but it, it wasn't like helping you, anything. It wasn't helping. Yeah. It wasn't helping. Okay. So, so the, yeah. So then what happened? So then I was Googling, of course, and I Googled some stuff about, um, well, I do remember Googling something about affairs and um, it said most affairs are four months to three years. And I was like, well, I guess I can try this for three years and see if, you know, at least I, I wanted to give everything I had so that I would never think I didn't give everything I had. So I thought, well, at least I can do that. But that wasn't much comfort because, you know, it's a three long years time. is a long time to go yeah. through that much pain. And uh, yeah. So I found your book while I was Googling, I found your book and um, I started reading it and I'm like, oh my, I was like, Wow, I had a little bit to do with this, I think, because um, one of the things he said was when he first told me, you know, like he said, you don't respect me, you don't appreciate me, and you're very controlling. And I'm thinking, what is he talking about? I don't even know what, what, you know, I thought it was the most respectful wife. And this, I just thought I, you know, was fine. And after I read your book, I was like, okay, I'm starting to see some of the things he was saying. It's making a little bit of sense here, you know? And so, yeah, I, I started trying the skills and, oh, and then an email came through and said, if you want to have a, like, a, we call it a discovery call now, but if you want to have a talk, you know, and see if you're interested in coaching. And so I thought, well, I'll, yeah, I'll do. And I think it gave you like a free hour of coaching or something. And I'm like, I'll do it. And so I was talking to the lady and she's like, well, I said, I just want to get immersed in these skills. What is the best way? And she said, well, um, we, she said, we do have training like that. If you want to become a coach, that is the best way to learn these skills is when you're teaching them with, to other people and talking to other people about them. And I was like, okay, sign me up. And I didn't even know if I was being married or not. Yeah. I mean, uh, that is amazing. So, cause I do remember, I remember, I remember early on in your coach training where you weren't sure you weren't sure you, you didn't didn't even, I don't think maybe you even thought you could save your marriage really. I know. I, well, I remember I could, you coached me one time. I never forget this. And you said, what's your magic wand? And I thought, okay, I'm putting this out there, but it is absolutely impossible. I said, I would love for my husband to come home to have the kind of marriage we've always wanted. And you know, get there. And you're like, and I thought you're going to be like, she's crazy. But you said, no, you said that is, I see that all the time here on the campus. You said, I see these, it turns around all the time. Women with wives, with the skills, their husbands will choose them every, every day and twice on Sundays over the other woman. And I kept that in my heart. And I, it's true. It's so true. And you said, someday we're going to be doing our happy dance for you. And we did eventually He got there and we were doing our happy dance. Yeah. So, I mean, at the time it just sounded so far fetched and it was impossible, but you know, when your husband's telling you that he has 0% attraction for you and he even told me I repulsed him 
He oh. told me he never loved me. Even when I walked down the aisle, he never loved me. Oh. I mean, he, <laughs> but he told me later, you say that stuff to yourself because it it's the only way you can do what you're doing. You have to make the other one, make your wife terrible in your mind to make, be able to continue justify. on doing what you're doing and justify it for your own moral sake. So if he's saying all that, sometimes it's not always true, but he did say all that. <laughs> good to know. Okay. Good to know. So if you are listening and you are hearing these words from your husband, like that didn't turn out to be his truth. Mm-mm. None of that was true. It wasn't but he said it uh, for two years or two and a half for straight. I heard it. I heard it and I heard it. But and you're like, ow, 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 every yes, time. Every time. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> ow, ow. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, um, it's, it's so exciting. It's, this is such a great story, Cindy. So I, I, but let's, okay, let's go back to, so you found, you found the book, you got into the training. What did you you start to do? And you had this incredible moment of accountability and awareness, right? Of like, maybe I had something to do with this, which is super painful, especially when you are, I mean, on the surface, everybody else, like I'm sure everybody at church and your family and everything is like, oh my God, he's the wrong, he's the bad person. (laughs) You're the good person, right? So how can it be that it was that you had anything to do with this happening? So I just, um, I knew that I could see that I had done things that needed to be fixed or changed. And so I, um, I went ahead and I started off with, um, gratitude and I like, he was still coming over and doing all the like mowing and doing the shoveling of the snow, the garbage, taking that, fixing things like the furnace was broken. He came and fixed that. And so all of a sudden I like, okay, I am going to start thanking him after 30 years. I was like, well, that's his job. You know, I didn't even acknowledge anymore that he was doing anything, you know, he's, and so I started thanking him. I'm like, oh, thanks for doing that. And he just ate it up. I could tell he was just eating it up. And so like, he would even come more, you know, when I would say stuff. So I knew that was working. And also self-care, I started to, I didn't even know what self-care was. Isn't that crazy? Um, I just had never, I thought, okay, I got to take care of the kids. I got to take care of everybody else. And then I'll someday, whenever that arrives, I'll do something for me, you know? And so I started going out with friends with lunch and I started getting pedicures, um, taking hot baths, you know, hot jacuzzis and Um, listening to your podcast, which were awesome. And just, um, I would put praise music on in the house, the house, I was alone now, you know, my husband, he had, he had moved out eventually into his own little, uh, one of our rentals. He wasn't with the other woman in hers, but, but he was in one of our rentals. And, um, so I was alone in the house. So I would just put on, um, praise music and just, and I got, ridiculously happy. I like got, you know, I started dancing to the music. I just remember. And also, also I, I was praying for my husband and, um, I feel like that got my mind to the anger. You can't pray for someone and still be angry at them at the same time. So the anger was starting to lift and go away. And so, um, the more less angry I was, the more happy I got. And I just, thought, you know what, I'm going to be go full, this goddess of fun and light that you guys, that we learned at coach training. And so I was like, before in the older days, when I didn't appreciate him, I, he would walk in the door and I would be cooking or something. I would not even acknowledge he came home. Like, isn't that it's terrible? I admit it. And I would just be keep cooking. I'm like, who cares? He's home. Okay. And now I thought, you know what? We're going to try something new here. And so every time he would, you know, he would come home. So he would still come in, you know, he started to want to do coffees in the morning once in a while. And because I was starting to change. So he was starting to want to do that. And so when he would come, I would just be like, 
run over to him and give him a hug and give him a big smile. And I can tell he loved it. <laughs> he ate it up. And so I did it, you know, I just, cause I used to think, well, our dog, when I would come home, our dog would be all happy to see me. And I just love my dog. I thought, Hey, I need to be like rusty. you know. <laughs> I need to be like... And so he just loved it. I could tell. So that right. was, who, yeah. Who doesn't love, right? Like you said, you love it with rusty too. <laughs> who doesn't love when someone's happy to see you like, Hey, it's you right that's a great feeling oh so, yeah so that was a big change and um I'm trying to think I I started doing this self-fulfilling prophecies of to get my like one thing I'll have to say is um the people like you said at church and all over were like oh come on after two years of going through this and them seeing it they're like kick him to the curb he yeah. you need you need to get some self-respect and I I'm so thankful I didn't listen to any of that. And my girls on the, my fellow trainees were like wonderful. They're like, we're standing for your marriage. They were the opposite. But the, but the thing I learned about my self-respect was I don't believe self-respect is how other people are treating you. I believe it's how you're, you treat other people. Wisdom yes. bomb right there. <laughs> That's <laughs> what I learned through this because if I would have listened to them and divorced him and I would be miserable right now because I have my whole family together and I have my kids have the home court advantage and I'm we get to celebrate all these holidays together we had two kids get married and when the weddings were wonderful they would have been so different uh, so different we were, right yeah. yeah I mean just yeah there's so many blessings and just stay in Staying steady, holding out and going through hard stuff, but God gets you through it. And eventually he, you know, with the skills, he turned around, he could see, and he, he would say to me, you know, like, wow, you've really changed. And like, you're, I, I you know, like he put his hands up next to each other and like, you're this, you know, and he'd raise it higher than the other on the other woman. He said so he that. was giving you like validation, like you're up here and she's down here. Yes, yes. <laughs> like, I don't like I was the other woman. <laughs> right. Yeah. You were the other woman to the other woman yeah. at this point, right? Yeah. And like he had started to ask me out on dates. Um, he he took me out for my birthday. And then after that, he just kind of liked it. So he started taking me every weekend. Um, you know, and uh, I could just really see a change. And so then COVID hit, of course, so we couldn't go on dates, but he started coming over um, to our house on like Sunday mornings because we couldn't either, we couldn't go to our church because of COVID. So we would come here and he would, it was like, got to be like a routine every Sunday morning, he would come here and we would watch TV, church together on online and so I'm sorry to the rest of the world that COVID actually wasn't good for us. <laughs> so <laughs> you're the one that caused COVID. Okay, good to know. <laughs> so, but it made us have, like, we we were together more because you couldn't be with anybody else or go anywhere. So it was it was nice that that part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so. I mean, that could have actually been. Um, it could have gone the other way. It sounds like too, right? Like if, um, if it had been COVID and, and he wasn't wanting to spend time with you, uh, oh, imagine it would have probably come to a head anyway, because yeah, he was getting more and more grumpy and yeah, it wasn't, it, it wouldn't have been enjoyable at all. <laughs> so I'm very, yeah. Like I said, God knew what he was doing and it's a horrible way to have to learn something, but yeah, I, I, if it weren't for the skills, I don't think we'd be where we are right now. Mm-hmm. So now what did you do as far as, um, so you know he's still seeing this other woman, even while he's coming over every Sunday morning and you guys are watching church together. So strange, but yeah. Right? Like how did you? Well, you- um, I had a lot of net during it, which is needless emotional turmoil, of course. And I would a lot of times drive over by his house just to see if, you know, things were, anything was over there. And, um, but just, 
I slowly, gradually could tell that it was less time with that and more time with me. And I didn't ever bring it up at the first when it was the beginning. That's all I could talk about was the other woman, the other woman. And after learning from you that don't give oxygen to that, I stopped giving any oxygen. I never talked about it. And um, I just, I feel like that suffocate, you know, it suffocates it when you don't give it oxygen. So, um, but I, um, I just could tell that he was starting to really question what he was doing. And so I went on a trip to Gulf Shores with two girlfriends and one of my friends was, oh, she was just so amazing. She helped me through the whole thing. Like she was there for me and stood for my marriage. She wasn't even a Laura Doyle girl, but she stood for my marriage. And I was so grateful to have her, but she was on this trip. And um, so we went and all of a sudden in the middle of the trip, he called me. And this is when I just knew, I knew things were going to be okay. He said, I love you. And I always have. And, and what's funny is the phone cracked right then. And I was like, I think he said, I love you. Wait, and so I said, can you repeat that? <laughs> and he said, I love you and I always have. I'm like, of all times for the phone to go out. <laughs> yeah, right, right. You kind of heard it, but you needed to hear it twice. <laughs> wow. Oh, that must have been such a magical moment. Yes. Oh, my friend and I were just screaming practically after I got off the phone that I, he said, I, I told the other woman that it's over and I shut the door because before he said he had always like left the door ajar, you know, like I'll, I'll check with you and see how you're doing in a month or in a couple weeks or, but this time he said, it's over. It's done. We're done. He said it, you know, and she agreed, which I'm grateful, but um, anyway, so then I knew, I knew it was going to be good from then on. And yeah, it, I mean, there's always blips and nothing's perfect, but it was, I, I will always be grateful. That was like in April of 2021 when he called me and said that, but then when I got home, he's, he, we still didn't move back in because that was April and it, we were still dating and things like that. But I just want to take it slow. Cause I, you know, I had been. 25 times. I was a little gun shy, you know? And so I was like, mm. so in October, he said he wanted to move home and um, he had a pastor that we were seeing, you know, once a month or once a week or like off and on. And um, he helped us kind of with the timing of when he would move home. And um, he even had us take a premarital class at 35 years of marriage. We took a premarital class. <laughs> I thought that was fun, but really and it was cute. actually helpful. So it's like, you know, I guess never too late. Um, but then um, December 14th, we made the determination because we wanted our kids were coming home from Chris for Christmas and we wanted to be together for by the time they were there. And um, so December 14th, a random Tuesday, he brought his clothes and moved back in. And it was, it was amazing. And what a gift for your family. Like what, what a Christmas present, right? Like here we are yeah. all together as a family again. Yeah. I'll never forget that. Um, one of, we had our oldest grandchild was four and he's a pretty, he know, knew what, like he knew that grandpa lived one place and grandma lived another place. And so um, he came down early, you know, to play and, he saw grandpa come out of the bedroom. He's like, where'd you sleep last night, grandpa? And he's like, grandma. And he's like, uh-uh. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> and so now, you know, it's a couple years later, he's like, doesn't even think twice about it. But he <laughs> Kids, you know, man. <laughs> lived, in a, <laughs> lived in a different house. And so I just met at four. That was a distant memory. And he will not even remember that because he won't. Yeah. Well. He sees grandma and grandpa together now. So, yeah. And and then for my Christmas present, um, I didn't know he was going to do this. We, we like I told you before, we were Christians. We went to a very conservative church. We didn't even wear wedding rings. Um, and I'll tell you, the whole time when he was gone, I would look at the women with wedding rings and be envious. 
that they had a wedding ring. And um, so he got me a wedding ring for Christmas Day in front of all the family. Wow. So it was really um, a way of saying in front of God and everybody, the whole family, like you are my wife. I love you. I'm committed to you. Yeah. Oh, Um, and one I wanted to tell you too, when we were going with the pastor and talking to him and taking it slow um, at one of our meetings, my husband got down on one knee and begged me for forgiveness with tears in his eyes. And I was like, so grateful. Yeah. Wow. That must have melted you to get that. I mean, that's, I think that's something a lot of women really want to experience when they have had a betrayal. And, and I know how it felt. It felt like you were all alone, but you're not all alone. You're, and there's a lot of people going through this hard stuff. There are. And just you talking about it. So, um, I mean, this is really taking away a lot of stigma for a lot, a lot of women who have been where you are. But I want to ask you, what about, I, I just know for me, when my marriage was broken down, I want, I really wanted to protect my image. I really didn't want to lose status in the community. And um, it's a hard thing, right? How did you, how did you deal with that? Cause you must've felt. Yeah. Oh, I definitely felt that. But after a while, <laughs> when you're so low, it doesn't, nothing surprises you anymore. <laughs> like you're, you're, it's amazing how people were so compassionate and things like everybody's got something, believe me. And they would come out of the woodwork talking to me about, you know, this and that, and just how in their life, nothing's perfect either. And um, I just, yeah, it's, it's amazing. And you just got to get to the point of humility where you're like, you know what, I, I just want my marriage. And, and like one of my, somebody said to me, oh, he's just like dragging you across the floor. Like you're a dirty rag, you know? And I'm like, it didn't feel good to hear that, but no, no. I, I just want my, my marriage. I want my family and I'll put myself, you know, I don't have to put myself higher than that. Like, I don't have to be the one to say I'm divorcing you or whatever, because you know what, in the end, I think that God is there for all of us. And I just felt like, you know what, if I hang in here, God will take care of me. And he did it. And I just, and it was because of the skills that I learned that I feel like that helped him be able to soften because of me changing. So, yeah. I mean, that's amazing. And I really, I hear your humility. It's so beautiful. It's really endearing and attractive to hear you, your humility and, um, and to know that, um, I appreciate hearing too, that like you kind of being vulnerable in your community, people knew what was going on. Everyone. And then, and then they, the, everyone, oh my gosh. So you're like, oh no. Okay. Church, everyone in my community, everyone, everywhere. Like I literally felt like no one didn't know. So it was like, okay, it's all out there. At, at some point you're like, okay, whew, I guess I don't, I don't have to keep it secret at least, but, um, and then and what I hear is that they got a little more vulnerable with you. They t- took you aside and said, well, you know, we've been through something similar or this is, this is what happened to us or and nothing's per and, it, and so you got to kind of see that um, you're, you're not alone, first of all, uh, and that everyone's got challenges and that just feeling like your marriage should be a certain way and it isn't, doesn't necessarily mean that, that that's a realistic expectation, I guess. Right. So yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just felt like, you know, why should I try to hide it? I mean, cause the, it, I mean, I, our church, you know, they, he didn't go to church with me anymore. He, they just knew, they knew it wasn't, I mean, they were praying for him when he was at that mid, um, Arizona retreat or a uh, recovery place. Yeah. Every, and, and then, you know, he didn't, nothing panned out from that. So they went through the whole thing with me, my friends and my church and my community. Yeah. So I, I really hear actually a lot of humility from both of you, you and your husband, really, he was pretty 
it sounds like he was pretty open to that. They, that he yeah. was like, I'm, I'm signing up for this and yeah, it's not a secret. Yeah. Everybody knew. So he actually had two people come to him at work that had gone through this two men that had actually left their wives and married the other woman. This is unbelievable. And they're still married to the other woman. And I mean, like, like they said, they came to him and said, I love my wife, but if you can work it out with your wife, you need to do that. You need to go back and try because You'll, you know, you'll basically save yourself a lot of headaches. And I, I really respected those two men because they were stepping out on a limb doing that. And um, just because they cared enough about him and didn't want him to have to go through what they'd been through. And they were so, standing, standing for your marriage, his I, prayer's marriage. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Okay. So uh, it's tremendous, Cindy. I, I give you so much credit. You know, it's astounding what you've accomplished, really, to put your whole family back together the way you have. I think a lot of people think this is impossible, what you've done. So it's just, it's a tremendous accomplishment. What What is your marriage like now? Oh, it. I mean, it is what I always wanted. Like, it's, we kiss each other goodbye every time he leaves. We, um, like, in the morning, we have coffee together before I would sleep in and he would leave for work. You know, I mean, we um, talk openly. Like we we actually read this little Bible study thing, devotional every morning. And like it brings up questions at the end and we'll talk about them. And it brings up things that, you know, like even like goals or dreams that you have or whatever you're struggling with. And we talk about it now. And like, I just. I didn't know that was possible before. I just thought he was too quiet and too withdrawn. And at night we um, go to bed together where before I would stay up cleaning forever and doing all the stuff that now I let him help me. Like he can cook. He's good at it. He can do his wash. He's great at it. And I was taking all that on and then being resentful and miserable because of all of it. And now I'm happy and he's happy and, um, so yeah, and we go to bed together, and I'll give him a back rub every night, and um, we'll we'll pr- we even pray together. So I mean, it's just this is what I always wanted, and I it wouldn't unless it was this huge interrupt. I don't think it would have changed, and um, unless I would have found the skills too, it wouldn't have changed. So yeah, it if yeah, it's amazing. Uh, I just hear your your beautiful gratitude. Um for for all that you have now and and also the journey that brought you here which is uh that is also astounding i mean um it does sound like you have what everybody wants and is there anything you could say about what helped you be committed through it i mean because there were some scary times right when it didn't seem like it was Um, gonna come to this i just knew i mean i had made a vow to god that you know, I through better or worse, which this was much worse than I ever dreamed when I was standing there at the wedding vows, but, um, through better or worse, I would stay. And, um, I didn't want to face God someday and, and have him ask me why I didn't stay. And so I just knew that, and I wanted my kids to be, I, I saw how hard it was at Christmas and at holidays without the kids didn't want him to come around. So, um, and he has a wonderful personality. He's super fun and funny and lovable. And so when he wasn't there is a big void and it was hurtful and I just wanted him there and I wanted them all happy and I wanted us all happy. And now we are. And if I wouldn't have stood for two and a half, three years, (laughs) um we wouldn't have got there so and he he says he says he told me I saw God in you because you gave me grace when I didn't deserve it so yeah wow yeah so amazing well it's, it's so moving and um and this is uh you know something 
I want every woman to feel like she's got this option to create this happy ending. And if you can do it, then, then, you know, right. There's, it's, there's hope for, for everyone. What is your tip for somebody who is where you were, where he's saying, I'm, yeah, there's another woman and I never loved you and I don't love you. Uh, and, and, and maybe she's going through the ringer like you were with the ups and downs and she wants what you have now where everyone's together at Christmas and you're happy to see him when he comes home and you have that, the coffee and, and the devotionals and you pray together at night and go to bed at the same time and you're both happy and you have, you know, and that little grand, grandson sees grandma and grandpa are happy. Um, what, what's your, what's your uh, best tip for somebody who is where you were? Um, I guess mainly just, um, you know, we aren't taught these skills. No one teaches them. And I wish there was some way we could learn them, but they're just not innate. You just, so I guess just get the book, start to read the surrendered wife, the empowered wife, all of those books. And just really, I, if I would have read them before this happened, I was in desperation when I, you know, I had the gift of desperation. And so I really think stuff comes to you when you need it. And I needed to hear those skills. But if I would have heard them before, I probably, you know, I thought I was doing everything right. I wouldn't have listened and saw myself. So when you're reading the book, try to see yourself there and try to see what can I do to make things better and different. And it, they truly, um, are an inspiration for changing your marriage. They really are. That's, that's my tip. <laughs> yeah. I love that. And I love the gift of desperation, right? That ended up being a gift because it um, brought a lot of focus to, to uh, practicing the skills and that brought a lot of transformation. So I love that. Um, what do you think you would say to Cindy, if you could go back in time and just tell her what you know now? I think I would say, stop trying so hard and doing everything and just um, learn to appreciate what you've got. Appreciate your husband for who he is and give him gratitude and respect. And I didn't know what respect was. I thought it was, I don't know, but I, I thought I was so respectful by showing him help. Here, I can help you with that. This is a way better way to do that. All of that, unbeknownst to me, was very, in man's world, very disrespectful. Because you're saying, you don't know how to do this. I know better. Or being controlling as far as like, oh, you know, you have to do the dishwasher this way. Or, um, or you know, I'll just do it myself, you know. And then taking all that on. And like, I just, I love how you you say to just say whatever you think. Like when I thought I had to give him every opinion that I had on everything and you don't have to. I just would tell myself, quit giving your opinion so much <laughs> because, you know, he just wants to hear that you have faith in him, that he's enough and he can do it. He can handle it. He can be my hero if I just let him, you know? So I think I would just tell myself to, you know, show that's showing respect in a man's world. That's his oxygen in my world. It's love. And if I show him respect, he does show me more love. So, and it's also an aphrodisiac according to some sources. <laughs> the best one yeah. on the planet, right? That's one thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, it, it's whenever um, things aren't going too good. I, I try to think, okay, what have I been disrespectful for? And I do apologize to him. I'll like, he didn't like when I used to say, I apologize for being disrespectful. I don't know why he wanted to know what it was like. I, and I would say when this, but he just, he didn't, he's at first when I used the skills, he didn't like that. Cause he thought I was manipulating him. I think. Mm, sure. Yeah. But for me, it was just to say, I'm sorry when I tried to control you or when I said this or when I complained or, you know, that works. Really good for me. That's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Incredible. Well, and you've mentioned um, how it's restored your family with your kids and everything. Do, do you think it's impacted them 
there's been any other impact to your kids? Um, they all, um, they were all very hurt by it. Very, very hurt. Um, and the girls, I have three daughters. I I meant to tell you, I have three daughters and one son. Um, they, the girls all forgave him pretty, pretty quickly when they saw how repentant he truly finally was. Um, our son, he was like my little protector when not through the whole thing. And, um, it took him a little longer. He's like, I, I, God says I need to forgive you. So I will, but I don't want to, but now it's been like a year or two and they work together. And my husband tells me he knows that, that our son has forgiven him. He can tell and he, he's very loving to him. He's the one that just got married recently and they come over for dinner a lot because they, my girls live in other states, but my son lives nearby. So, um, yeah, so it took them a while, but I think they're all there now. Wow. Incredible. Wow. What a, yeah, it just feels like a miracle. I can't think of, I can't think of anything more valuable than to have your family restored like that and to have all that, all those relationships healed. And, uh, I just give you all the credit, Cindy. Oh, in fact, I'd like to present you with the wife <laughs> award, the best wife award. You deserve it. You are amazing. So, so committed, so courageous, so vulnerable, so humble, so respectful. Um, you've really created something so, so special. Uh, and now you're a coach and you can show other women how to do the same thing when they are feeling uh, hopeless or or just having a lot of pain, right? Just feeling how awful it is, just going through it. Um, you've been there, you know exactly what that's like. Uh, you can empathize with them. And uh, it's just, it's such a wonderful thing to know you're not alone. And uh, you made a huge contribution to ending world divorce by coming on this podcast and telling your story today. So well, Laura, so I much. To God and Laura Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I feel like. Well, thank you so much. Huge compliment. Huge compliment. Uh, but you did it. You did it. That's and and uh, and it proves it can be done, and um, and that it really is all it's cracked up to be when you get over to the other side and uh, have your marriage back just just the way you always dreamed it would be. So, thank you so much, Cindy. Thank you, Laura. What's it really like to be a relationship coach and how do wildly successful relationship coaches get that way anyway? Find out by listening to the Successful Relationship Coach podcast with Master Relationship Coach Kathy Murray, one of the best relationship coaches in the world. She has helped so many relationship coaches become wildly successful, including me. She shares her secrets every week on the Successful Relationship Coach podcast. Subscribe now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, we're going to unpack what is emotional cheating. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that, not to brag, but I once finished a 21-day diet by 1 p.m. the same day I started it.